Hello everyone. Welcome to the Biochess and Culture online lectures. My name is Angelia and I will be teaching you in this video fundamental rules of the game. Chess is the game between two players. One side get white pieces, another side get black pieces. The main goal of the game is to win the opponent king. Winning the opponent king in the chess language is called checkmate. Chess is an old game. It is believed its origin comes from India from more than 1,500 years ago. Legend also says that chess was invented by the Indian ruler and his conception was to two sides represents the armies to go for war, not only to increase the fighting spirit, but to develop the strategic way of thinking. Chess is also a combination of art and sport. When the player wants to win the game and collect the point, has to use the power of mind and creativity instead of physical power. Let's take a look over the board and learn more about the chess pieces. Before starting the game, each side, white and black, has to set up the pieces on the proper squares. White pieces always come to the first and the second rank. Black pieces go to the seventh and eighth. In the chess game, the player who has white pieces start the first move. Each piece has the specific name, different shape, way of moving and its value. Let's name the pieces first. On the right and left corner, white has rooks, black has rooks too. Near the rook comes the knight, two knights white, two knights black. Next it comes the bishop, two bishops white, two bishops black. Then it comes to the queen and the king, the queen and the king of black. Know that white queen always have to start on the start position to be on the white square and black queen to be on the black square. On the second rank, white have eight pawns, black has eight pawns as well. This is the start position of the pieces and this rule has to be respected, otherwise the game will not be counted as illegal. Before we see how do the pieces move, let's take a look on the empty chess board and learn a little bit more about the squares. Chess board has 64 squares in total. From left to the right, the lines marked with the letters represent the files. This would be A file, B file, C file, D file, E, F, G, and H file. On the opposite direction, the lines represented with numbers, the ranks. The first rank, second rank, third, fourth, fifth, sixth rank, seventh rank, and eighth rank. On the chessboard, there are also a lot of diagonals. Diagonal can be very short, can be a little longer, and can be very long. All the diagonals have the same color. Each square on the chessboard has the name. To read the name of the square, we have to connect the file and the rank. This square would be E4. Another example, this square will be called F. Six, let's take one more square. This square will be G7. Remember when always you want to say the name of the square, first read the letter and then the number. Not only the squares that have a name, also the sides of the board. From one to four belongs to white, so this is white territory. From fifth to eight belongs to black. This is black territory of the board. Middle of the board is called the center. The center is the most important part of the chessboard. Squares D4 and E4, white side of the board, represent the center from the white side 
and the squares D5 and D5 represent the center from the black side of the board. These four squares represent the full center of the board and it's very important in the later stage, also when you learn more to play chess, you will understand that everything is actually happening in there. If we divide the chess board from A file to D file, we will get the queen side of the board. Side of the board from E file to H file belongs to the king. It is king side of the board. You may know, maybe you don't, but if you hear chess player how discuss the game they play, you can hear the words, I play on the queen side, I give checkmate on the king side, my center was not very strong, and so on. This is a chess language, and the numbers and ranks and squares are called chess notation. Now when we know a little bit more on the, of the squares and the chessboard, let's learn each, each piece separately. Let's start with the pawn. Pawn is the smallest piece in chess and the value of pawn is one point. Pawn can move only forward for one step. When pawns stand on the star position, for white this is the second rank. For black, star position of the pawns is seventh rank. Pawn is allowed to go two steps, only when he stands on the star position. When the first move is done, then pawn can go only one step. Pawn can never move side, can never move diagonal, and never can go backward. This is the rule of the pawn. All the other pieces can go back to the position where they move from, but the pawn can never go backward. That's why move with the pawn is always a responsible move. In the case that there is the opponent piece standing on the diagonal line near, near to the pawn, pawn is allowed to capture it, like this. If any opponent piece stand in front of the pawn, then pawn is not allowed to move pawn is blocked. The secret power of the pawn comes when he reach the last rank. The last rank for white pawn would be the eighth rank. The last rank from, for the black pawn would be the first rank. Once the pawn reach the last rank, we do the promotion. Pawn is allowed to be replaced with the queen, rook, bishop, or the knight. Pawn cannot remain being the pawn, neither can become a king. You can choose the queen, this is promotion. You can choose any of the three pieces like rook, bishop or knight, that would be called under promotion. Most of the players choose the queen because queen is the most powerful piece. That would mean that if you already have queen of the board, you can have two of them. Next piece is the rook. The value of the rook is five points and rook is the line piece. Rooks move straight, back, and sides. Very simple way of moving. You can choose with the rook to go one step if you want or till the end of the board when you are allowed. Rook cannot move diagonally, rook cannot jump over the pieces, and rook can also capture the opponent pieces if they are standing on its way. The bishop. The bishop value is three points. Bishop is diagonal piece. It's move only on the diagonals, like this. Same as the rook, you can choose as long as you want to put the bishop. If you want one square, or if you go, want to go to the end of the diagonal, it's up to you to make a choice. Bishop can capture the opponent piece if they're st standing on its way. Bishop cannot jump, bishop cannot move on the lines. Let me give you one example. If you want to put bishop on this white square, you will not be able to jump. You will not be able to go there in one move, but you can play first move here and then wait your next turn and then reach your destination. In the chess game, in the beginning of the game, each player has two bishops, two bishops, one is going to the one color and the other one goes another. That means that they don't disturb each other and they have to finish the game on the 
color they start. So if you start with bishop on the light square, you cannot finish with that bishop on the black square. That would not be allowed. The king. We cannot count the price of the king by points because if you don't have a king or if you lose your king, you cannot continue the game. Without the king, you cannot start. That makes king being infinity piece. Because when you lose the king, then the game is over. King can move straight back and side and diagonals also, but only one step, which makes his power not very strong by movements, but king doesn't need more movements. King has to be safe back behind the pieces. The queen. The queen is the most powerful piece. The value of the queen is nine points. Queen can move like the rook, straight back, sides, plus diagonals like a bishop. And this makes queen the most powerful because she can control from one point, like from the center of the board, 27 squares in total. I will give you one example if you want to use this square, this is square f7. If you want to reach f7 with the queen, you cannot go in one move. Queen can also not, queen is also not allowed to jump. But queen has many different options how to reach this square. She can try from the square d5 by diagonal to, con to come to this square next move or from the line like a rook or like a bishop, diagonally movement and then one step like a rook. And the last piece, the most tricky piece is the knight. Maybe the most complicated to learn the movement. The price of the knight, the value of the knight is three points, the same like a bishop. Knight is the piece who only jumps. Knight jumps like the letter L, the capital letter L, or you can go if it's easier for you to go two steps straight and then one side, or another side. It will both be the capital letter L. Or direction. If we go down one, two, and then choose the side one and another, those two squares will also be available for the knight. And on the side, right side, letter L. When we draw, we will get this square and the another letter L, another square. And for the left, the same, one, two squares, then side, one side, another side. This is the movement of the knight. Interesting thing to note for the knight that when he make a move, when he jumps, he always change the color of the square. When he's standing on the light square and he make a move, you will see that he always jumps to black and from black to white back. These are all pieces and with this knowledge about the chessboard, simple rules, knowledge about the pieces, what they can do, what they cannot, you can try your first game of chess. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.